Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today I've got one that I keep seeing on socials. It's from Amazon. It's the M. Assam Magic Finish 4-in-1 Mousse Foundation Powder Concealer. Yeah, retails for $29.99 for one ounce of product or 30 milliliters. It is in five different shades, one of which is kind of like a non-shade, like a for everybody shade. So four different tones and then one all-encompassing base from the SM Beauty range, the Magic Finish, I got the porcelain shade. Porcelain tint is especially suitable for very light to fair skin types and adapts individually to the skin tone. The light makeup mousse provides healthy fresh skin tone. The silky light makeup texture behaves like a second flawless skin. That description's terrible. <sighs> yes, I'm editorializing. <laughs> Cruelty free, vegan, alcohol free. Now, I did not notice this when I ordered it, but there is a warning that I've actually never seen before on Amazon, so maybe this is a new warning that wasn't there when I ordered it, but it says that this is a frequently returned item. See that little warning right in the middle here? <laughs> so, hmm, I don't know. As far as the reviews go, it's 4.1 out of five stars with over 14,000 reviews. So, but you know how people can manipulate reviews on Amazon. So let's take a look at the porcelain shade swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from M. Assam, the Magic Finish Makeup in shade porcelain. Second, I've got from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last I've got from Wet n Wild, the Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. I did not prime because this is supposedly primer and concealer and foundation and powder all in one. Here is the texture. It does look like a mousse style of foundation. Ziva, please get down. I've got a damp sponge for one side of my face. This is a glow-in-the-dark ghost from Wet n Wild. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I love spooky season. Spooky season manicure number two. I've got some spider webs and some ghosties and some boo and pink Halloween, which is a trend that I'm loving. I'm saying all this while I'm trying to find my BK Beauty 101 brush. Did I stick it in the wrong place? I sure did, there it is. I'll go in on the other side with a brush. I have not tested to see if this actually glows in the dark, but I'm gonna trust that it does. That makes me very, very happy. All right, let's do brush side first. I'm just gonna dip in here. Ooh, it feels very moussey, which I almost expected to smell like chocolate. It doesn't, but it feels like food. <laughs> Maybe I'm just hungry, I am hungry. So uh, there's that. Let's check the sponge side. I suspect that the mousse sort of uh, texture is probably gonna apply best with a brush, but I had to use the ghosty. I had to, because the ghosty is adorable. Yeah, I'd say pretty sheer coverage with the sponge. Now, the description, as you saw, did not really have any valuable information whatsoever. So uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be full coverage, light coverage. Uh, pretty light coverage, but it is doing some evening of redness. And I think the shade is actually a pretty good match right now. Let's try the brush side. Get in here with... A little bit of now <laughs> this is a super soft I think I got way too much product on this side it's a super soft feeling mousse but it almost looks like spackle but it's super super thin as soon as you blend it out it's not thick at all it's very whipped it's a very lightweight feeling in fact as I'm smoothing it out with the brush I mean it feels 
very glidey in a good way. I like how it feels. It's got a perfume scent to it. It smells like perfume. Why? I mean, I get it. Like, the, the problem with unfragranced or completely fragrance-free stuff is that you're going to smell the ingredients. And the ingredients don't always smell good. So then people are like, oh, this smells bland. Or why does it smell bland? I wanted it to be unscented. Well, people put fragrance in these things to mask the scent of the ingredients. So an, a fragrance-free thing doesn't mean it doesn't smell like anything. It just means there's no fragrance ingredients. Ooh, this is not looking so great. <laughs> As I was thoroughly distracted by the sudden not greatness on my face. But you know what I'm saying? Like fragrance free just means there's no fragrance ingredients in it. Fragrance ingredients can be sensitizing. We're gonna try and build this up and make these two sides match. But that doesn't mean it's not gonna smell like anything. So like if you can't stand the neutral nothingness smell or smelling the ingredients, which just might smell kind of meh, then maybe you want fragrance in your products. Ah, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't win. Now, this looks really heavy on my nose. I do have a little bit of peeling going on, so... Okay, here's what I'm seeing. It dried down to powder, like it... It converted from that nice, slick, smooth mousse to a powder that is clinging to the edges of any dry skin that I've got. Let's take a look at it on my not dry skin areas. It just looks a little bit heavy, like a little cakey. A little bit of cakey powder look to it. However, the coverage is quite easy, quite nice. It did apply, I mean, it feels really nice on the skin as long as it doesn't dry out. This shade might be a smidge too light for me. Maybe not. Once I get my bronzer and such on random hair on my forehead. All right, let's, let's zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm seeing. You know, it just looks a little heavy, that's all. It, it looks like uh, it's clinging to some dry skin on my nose and on my cheeks and on my chin, just a smidge. It's that powder finish is accentuating any of the sort of dry skin that I've got going on, but it's not settling into lines. I would say it is somewhat blurring, like slightly blurring to pores. Actually, my pores are not looking very obvious, so that's nice. But the fact that I can see the outlines of any sort of dry skin that needs to exfoliate away is a bummer because I almost always have dry skin that needs to exfoliate away, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm very frequently dealing with at least a little patch here and there of dry skin. And I'm trying to get this lid back on. All right, got the lid back on. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, things are falling down. Things are falling down. All right, let's check the time. It is 1.42. Let me go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. Back with the Magic Finish Foundation. It looks terrible on my nose, but otherwise it looks okay everywhere else. I'm curious as to whether it's going to start locking my lines in and looking dry because that's kind of starting a little bit on my forehead and on my smile lines here and it's kind of one thing I will say is that despite it claiming to be powder finish powders didn't blend super great on top of it that's kind of making my nose look worse Ugh. So, not my absolute favorite thing on the planet. On the rest of my face, my complexion is all the gorgeous, 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 gorgeous hourglass palette. Oh my goodness. I used the bronzer, and then I used that blush, and I used that highlight. So... These are beautiful products that typically blend very well. And I just feel like it's a little patchy 
I feel like it's clinging to the foundation a little bit. I've got on my eyes the Iconic London Booming and Gleaming Eyeshadow Palette. This one's gorgeous. It came in the October Ipsy. And it's one of those sort of like all-in-one, all-you-need kind of palettes. Like your everyday stuff. You could do daytime, nighttime, shift between the two. It's a little more warm toned than I typically go for. But it's very pretty. Definitely, definitely pretty. My lip is Anastasia Beverly Hills Praline. ABH, this was also in my Ipsy. The volumizing mascara. This packaging is freaking gorgeous. Like, I did not think this was a mascara and it's a beautiful mascara. So, bravo, ABH. You're killing it right now, girls. You're killing it, you're killing it. Is that all the things? I think that's all the things. Guess what I'm gonna go do? I'm gonna go get a sandwich. It's a gloomy day. It is the day of the solar eclipse when I'm filming this, but we can't see it. East Coast is all cloudy. I'm looking out my windows just past you. Behind you is my windows. So if that's my plan, then I'll come back tonight and give you guys my final thoughts. Oh, there's gonna be a daylight check-in in there. Sandwich, then daylight check-in. Then I'll come back tonight and give you guys my final thoughts. Doing the old daylight check-in outside of CVS, next to my open window, so you can see the sunlight. Shade match is good for winter for me. This one just looks um, a little flat. I've already lost coverage on my chin, which is disappointing. My nose is uh, also looking like the product is disappearing. Um, yeah, everything still just looks patchy as heck. Like. I just really, you know, mm. yeah, no, not really liking this one. Not, not, mm. it felt really nice going on, but it just feels kind of heavy. And I do feel like it leaves a residue on my fingers. Like it's, I don't know, Not I'm not enjoying this one. And it's only, what time is it? 4.55, so it's only been a couple hours. Uh, we'll see how long I make it, but I'm pretty sure I know what I think of this one. Mm, not the worst thing ever, but will I ever wear it again? What do you think? Come back tonight and find out. 9.49 p.m. We are approaching the eight hour-ish mark. Let's take a look at how this magical foundation held up. Up close, I look like I have zombie skin. Basically clings to every single little piece of flaking, peeling, anything, texture. So like from a distance, like a conversational distance, I just look like I don't know how to blend my makeup. And up close, I look like I have zombie skin. So let's zoom in so you can see what I'm seeing. Coverage on my chin is a hot mess, moved around, clung to peelies, like peelies I didn't even really know I had. Same with around my upper lip and around my smile lines like it just looks crusty and gross my nose also crusty and gross and a little bit of polka dot pores coming in there blush bronzer highlights still look unblended <laughs> the texture between my eyebrows is all caked up my forehead looks like a peely mess it's just not good. The feeling of it that I was trying to describe, well, a lot of the product is just gone, so it also doesn't hold up very well because we're not even at eight hours yet, if I remember the time correctly. Like, there's not even much left, but what it felt like was as if I had not properly let my skincare soak in, you know what I'm saying? Except that I did my makeup hours after my skincare. So it wasn't my skincare that I was feeling. It was the product just 
leaving that residue on the surface of my skin. And I can't show you the bottle or the jar for the grading purposes because I already dropped it back off at UPS to return it to Amazon. <laughs> So if I had to give a grade, can't even remember the name of it. If I had to give a grade to this one, um, you know, I'm tempted. I was, I was up until about the four hour mark, I was thinking C minus. After that, when it started getting that residue to it, then I was like, oh, this is in the D range. Then I got to look at my zombie face. I mean... I feel like it would work for someone that doesn't have dry skin, doesn't have peeling skin, doesn't have texture issues. So if you have the face of a newborn baby, you are probably fine. But, but for our age group, you know, and the thing with that whole residue is I don't really produce oil. So I'm not sure it would really work very well for oily skin either. I, of course, can't speak to any experience there because I don't have oily skin, but it just seems like it wouldn't based on that just excess, you know, liquid oil, whatever it is in the product. Oh, I feel like there's hair on my nose. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, uh, so I don't know who this would work for. I think I have to fail it. You know, it's not a zero. I wore it all day, but... Uh, yeah, it's an F. I, it's never wearing it again. It's not even the kind of thing that is going to get a second chance. I think it would work for people that don't have any skin issues, possibly. But that's not me. So, there you have it. Another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books. If you like Foundation Reviews, if you had fun with this one, please give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments, what would you like to see next? I buy foundations and other stuff every chance I get, and I keep a running list of what you guys request, and the more requests I get for different things, the higher on my list those things go, and I buy them first. So let me know what you want to see, and I will do my best to get my hands on it. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. If you want some more behind the scenes types of content or access to my Rolla Look eyeshadow app, check me out on Patreon. Link is in the description box, patreon.com slash geekoutofwater. And as always, I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.